Hi now besties, welcome back to the channel. I am currently not feeling good. I'm not really sure what is going on with this weather, but this weather is kicking my bosom. It's kicking me down. But um so this is my daughter. She would not let me be great, y'all. Look at her finger kick getting in the way. Can you do my nails, mommy? So I had to pause really quick to do her cuticle and show how do your cuticle work. And then she was like, can I try like, sis, this is not for children. This is for adults only. So I decided to end up painting her nails glitter. And I decided to just go ahead and then do the cuticle prep on my other hand, too, while I was already, you know, already occupied. So you already know how it is. I'm using the peel-off base coat, and I'm going to apply a thin layer to all five of the nails. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing lava nails. I've been looking at these nails for over two years and I literally just muscle up the courage to do these nails. So I'm doing my favorite shape, which is stiletto. And I think I'm gonna be doing a little more stiletto on this channel a little bit more because honey, this is my favorite shape. I like it crispy, I like it sharp. I just love stiletto nails. Like, stiletto, wait, pump, wait, in, yeah, the club, uh. okay. To me personally, stiletto nails is the easiest nail to shape. Now, don't get me wrong, you can't over file stiletto nails and they be turning out lopsided. You just gotta be careful. But I'm telling you, shaping stiletto is the easiest shape that you can get down when you are learning how to do nails. So I am putting a clear, I'm putting a clear bead of acrylic on all five of the nails today, just so my nails do not get stained from the colored acrylic. When you are actually doing a thin layer of acrylic pertaining to the cuticle just to add like a layer down on the natural nail, you just want to make sure that your beads are not all that wet. They want to be like semi-dry. So that way you're not flooding the cuticle. And then also you're not like making the natural nail bulky because you are laying another acrylic bead on top of the clear acrylic. color blocking and basically all color blocking is is instead of you bringing the acrylic all the way down towards the tip of the nail you're basically only keeping it in one section or one part of the nail and when you work with black acrylic you want to make sure that you are working with small beads and that your acrylic is not runny. So Glam and Glitz um, to me personally it's on the runnier side but since I have my liquid powder ratio down pat Using running acrylic to me is much easier than using self-leveling acrylic because you have to take time for it to mold and things of that nature, right? 
So all I'm doing is just basically bringing it down towards the tip of the nail. And then I'm going to straighten it up. You know, give it like a nice little square. So that way I'm actually forming the lava top part of it. So I want to talk about content batching a little bit. So let's get into it. So content batching is you taking one day out of the week to make content the entire day. It doesn't matter what time you start as long as you are filling your day with content. So like if you work a full eight hour shift or 10 hour shift, then you would take eight or 10 hours out the day to make content. Now you don't have to technically work a full eight hours to make content. It just all depends on what you do, right? So I'll use me for example. Since I've been trying to push out more short form content, I took three hours out of my day to find some designs I get some inspiration from. And then I recreate it and I also make content because you also got to think about when you're making content, it's a stop and go process. You're trying to make sure you're getting this angle. You're trying to make sure that the lighting is good. You're trying to make sure that your phone isn't dying. You know, so it's, it's a lot of stuff that goes into when you're doing content versus you just being like, okay, I'm just going to do some nails today. You ain't worrying about, you know what I'm saying, anything. You're just doing your nails. You got to put a little more thought process into being content, into content batching. So I did five nails in one day. For three hours nail art designs and I only just did one I only did one nail one design per nail so that gives me five days worth of content and if I wanted to post two two videos a day that only that's only gonna give me two two days worth of content in one extra day so I was like no I'm only gonna post one time a day mind you I don't think really posting one time a day is all that effective on these apps I feel like I don't know Maybe posting like two times or three times a day is a little bit more effective. But if you can't post two, three times a day, do what you can. So batch batch creating content, not only is it much more beneficial to do that, but also it doesn't leave you overstimulated and it also doesn't leave you burnt out. And then that way you will have some leeway room to be like, okay, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to go out with my girls. I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. And then Monday, boom, kick it right back into it batch content monday and then have all my content ready for the rest of the week you know what i mean so i feel like batch content creator is really great especially like wanting to become a content creator or even just being a content creator in general i know there are some people that do that do full on nail sets that take five hours out their day to do four nail sets a day like you know it just all depends on like what you personally are trying to achieve when you are batch creating content so don't overstimulate yourself don't burn out just give yourself time to just give yourself one day to just do strictly content and in that way you will start reaping the benefits of less work more benefits because like we said we want to work smarter and not harder working harder is what i used to do which is try to do one nail a full nail set every single day when i could be trying to do two full nail sets in a day you know so it's all about balance. Balancing life and being a content creator can be very can be very challenging because like if you are a mom or your wife or you know what I'm saying, or you have like other friends, like you have like other priorities. So like trying to like balance work life and then content creating, you can you can definitely become overstimulated and burnt out so quickly because you're trying to balance a lot of things in that one frame of work and it's just like you have to know how to use your discernment or when it's time to or it's time to go do this or it's time to go do that you know so it's all about really it's really all about balance and i know like most people that do youtube are, are already have like entrepreneurship mindsets like they don't want to work a nine to five so knowing that you're an entrepreneur entrepreneurs work 24 7. literally they work 24 7. But they also got the benefit of financial freedom and being able to pick and choose when they want to come to work, when they don't want to come to work. Like there are some nail, not nail set, but there are some people that's been on YouTube real, really long to where they could post one video a month and their watch hours are still going to be doing good in that one month because they built that rapport, they built their community, they built their platform up to that level to where they don't have to consistently upload videos. But when you're starting out, and when you try to build your community, you have to be consistent because people like consistency. 
and that's like where I'm at like I just realized it's been five days since I posted a YouTube video though it feel like five days passed by heck no like where in the world is these days going like I could have sworn I just uploaded a video two days ago I just took the nails off last night so how has it been five days since I uploaded this video so I feel like also keeping an eye on your on the days that you posting can keep up can help you keep up track with okay now it's time to post because I, I honestly did not know it's been five days since I posted my last video like I promise I did not know that it's just that the, it's like the days are like slipping by like they're just going by so fast I just can't real I just can't fathom the reality you know what I'm saying how fast these days are going by so now I'm up I literally just worked a 10 hour shift and I'm in my closet. My kids are in the living room playing. I literally work a 10-hour shift. And sometimes my kids are at my house, too, when I'm working. Because I work from home. And, yes, it's kind of stressful working from home with kids. If, if, anyone, if anybody wants to know the answer, the answer is yes. I am be very stressed. Okay? I have three toddlers I am taking care of by myself. Okay? And this ain't nothing to brag about. Like, I don't know why folks want to idolize and brag about single parenthood. Oh, you a strong black woman. You could do this. You could do that. We've been there. We walked your shoes. Nobody cares about that. And me, personally, I don't care about that. Like, don't be telling me, you know, you ain't the first woman to do this. And you won't be the last. It's the fact that people are idolizing the fact that you are a single mom and making it seem like it's okay to be a single mom. Now it's okay to be a single mom when you don't want to go when you don't want your kids to grow up in a toxic household. But soon fact the matter, like we need to start idolizing that type of stuff. That that stuff is beyond me. But anyway, back to the nails. So I am just basically filing gently, straight side to side because I want to make sure I'm getting that straight crispy line because I'm about to move into the lava, right? So, but how are y'all doing? How is everyone going? I will also want to say to everyone, thank you all so much. For all the love and support that I got on my last video, because I'm telling you, it was really, it was really a hard time for me during that time for the hurricane. And I just did not really know, like, what to do mentally. I was literally just going through it. So, I'm okay now. And I'm just so grateful that everyone showed so much love to me and, you know, keeping me their best wishes towards me. So, for the lava, what I am doing is I am grabbing a small bead, and I'm using a Mia Secret 3D acrylic brush. This is not sponsored, by the way. I just, like, I've been using Mia Secret products since I've been doing nails, and I did not even know. It's been four years. Literally, like, Facebook always be coming back with the memories. Like, the very, the, the girl nail set I did popped up, it was just, like, four years ago. I'm like, dang, it's really been that long. Like, girl, what? Anyway, so I'm just adding the little dots and, you know, I'm just basically making sure that I'm not making them too bulky because even though you are, you want to give it a 3D lava effect, you don't want to make it too thick, the lava, that way so when you're encapsulating, it's not bulky. You want to still make sure you got a smooth surface when you're encapsulating and that's very important when you're doing 3D effects inside of a nail and you have to encapsulate it so all i'm doing right now is i'm just basically pulling i'm just basically pulling the lava and putting it together as one and just basically you know just making some little swirls or things of that nature you know how the little lava be looking in the little lava lamp yeah i like to have a lava lamp <laughs> oh my goodness i don't know how that thing broke i don't know it broke though and I decided to do different color lava lamp designs because I just felt like I just wanted to be vibrant. You know, I wanted to be that girl. And even though these don't glow in the dark, I still feel like they turned out great. I've been trying to do this design for two years now, and I'm just not mus muscling up the courage to do it this year. Ain't that crazy? I got to get out of my head. I got to get out of my head. But, um... So I'm using a nail by Naya. I think this is her yoke. And you know what? I don't think she, I think she's actually discontinuing all of her, her colored acrylics and just going to start selling gel polish. And I probably personally think that's a good idea. Like, like to be to be honest, I really think just being like a full gel polish line is ten times great. Cause you don't really need colored acrylic when you think about it. Like everything you can. Well, I mean, you can use colored acrylic for this. It may not be controversial or whatever that word is. You need colored acrylic for certain things. I'll just say that. 
but her products are really great um i like her products a lot now i'm not gonna lie they're a little on the expensive side but hey i'll buy what i can when i can i'll just say that Matter of fact, Clawley acrylic powder was gifted to me when um, when something happened to me personally in my life. So someone gifted, someone actually, a little back of story time, not by my personal thing that happened in my life, but a little basic back of story time for the Clawley. So basically, I had posted something on my story, and I was talking to, I've been talking to this girl here and there, and she was already always asking me about, um, you know, nail designs, sending me nail designs, but she always wanted to get her nails done, but she never got her nails done by me. So I said, I said what I said on my story, and she was just like, girl, what's your address? I'm about to send you all my nail products because I no longer want them. I'm like, uh, why you want your nail products? So we was talking with everybody, and then I kid you not, the next morning I woke up, my front door was filled with nothing but nail supplies. Like, I was just like, oh my gosh. I was so freaking thankful and grateful because what happened to me and losing out of all my products, I did not know where I was going to end up pertaining to my nail business. So that's why y'all see me use like a lot of Clawly in there because all of my other name brand products that I did have, I no longer have them. And I just not want, I don't want to get into that story time because honestly, it's very traumatizing. Yes, me. So yeah, we're not going to talk about that. But look at how great the design is turning out. If you do this design, let me know. Also, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Why y'all don't be hitting my like button? Y'all be making me mad sometimes. Hit the like button. Shoot, it ain't gonna cost you nothing. <laughs> but, anyway, thank y'all so much for tuning into the channel and kicking it with your girl. I'm gonna be showing my face coming up soon on my channel. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. I just want to get my backdrop together, like my decor for my wall and things of that nature. So when I do start showing my face, I can have like some type of nice background or something. But I am going to let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. I was just chatting and chatting and chatting this whole time when I just chatting in the way, girl. Because I ain't have no voice a couple weeks ago. And, I, you know, I had a lot going on. So, you know, I just want to catch up with, their, with everybody and... See how everybody doing there. You know, I enjoy doing nails. I enjoy, I enjoy my YouTube and things of that nature. Oh, last thing I want to talk to y'all about. How do y'all feel about like pricing? Let's get into that. So I feel like starting out, let's start from the basics. As a beginner, no experience in things of that nature. We are in different times from four years ago. So four years ago, I was charging $10 nail sets to start out. Because first of all, I didn't know what I was doing. And on top of that, these folks are at my house for eight hours. Why are you at my house for eight hours getting your nails done? Like, what are you doing, Bree? So, I started $10. And I feel like if you live in an area and you have to, and you are not allowed to charge, then tell them that, you know, you accept donations or you accept tips. And then tell them that your tips cannot be no lower than $20. You know what I mean? Because you still got to turn around and buy product at the end of the day. Right. And also what I used to let people do, like if my clients want charms, but they don't want to pay my charm fee, they will just go buy their own charms. And I would I would have been OK with that because I'm all about trying to make you have a good experience and let you and it be affordable, but also make it make sense with my time. So they have, you know, and they're bringing in certain like things Then you know, you don't have to worry about charging them more money for that. So I feel like starting out, $20 set starting out with no experience is, to be honest, is pretty good. And maybe $25 since we are in quote-unquote inflation, which I think is so fake. Because how can a, how can a natural earth that we live on become inf inflation? 
Like, what? Anyway, I ain't got time to get into that. But, um... And then, like, as an advanced nail tailor, let's just say that your nails last two weeks. Okay, then maybe give yourself, like, a $5 increase. I feel like maybe giving yourself maybe a $5 increase maybe every six months or maybe once a year would be great. But, like, don't start out doing nails $20 and then you're like, oh, dang, my nails is bomb. My nails is good. Okay, boom. $60 nail sets. You cannot do that to your clients because your clients are not financially equipped at that time for a price adjustment without them knowing ahead of time that you are you know what i'm saying that you are changing your prices now i have seen some nail techs warn their clients on their story like hey everybody i do want to let y'all know that i am going to be increasing my prices on october 16th you know and then that way your clients can choose if they still want to come to you or not but real clients real people that deal with you they ain't gonna they don't care as long as you are making it worth their while for them now advanced nail techs i know advanced nail techs they charge maybe 75 and on up for full sets and i personally think that that's pretty decent me me personally i think i was a cheap nail tech well i ain't gonna call myself cheap but my nails was not all that expensive like if somebody asked me for this and I was doing nails, I probably would have charged them probably one twenty five. And but somebody another nail tech probably would have charged them maybe one seventy five. You know, I just feel like your work and what you feel and your quality is is based on you. But don't overprice yourself. You know, because at the end of the day, if you realize a lot of these companies are coming out with things that they're trying to take people out of business. They can't they look at Sheen, press on nail tip. That way folks ain't gotta go get their nails done. Okay, people, they they come out with braided wigs because folks don't want to get their hair braided. Folks want to spend that much money to get their hair braided. Then on top of it, they got DIY lashes because they don't want to spend that type of money getting their lashes done. So I feel like it's not always about being expensive and being the most expensive nail tech or beauty artist on the block. It's really truly about your craft and what you feel is deemed worthy while also still being able to be of service to your community. You know what I mean? So price yourself as how you feel, but make sure that you are being fair to those people around you. Because if you was in their shoes, you would want to be making sure that you're affordable, but also make sure that you're sustaining your lifestyle off of nails. Now, don't get me wrong. I know folks sit up here and what's the word for it? They, they, um, yeah, they cancel appointments. I always charge a deposit. I personally feel like your deposit need to be half of what your, what it is. That's what I used to do. At first, my deposit was $10, but then when folks used to stand me up, no, if your nail set is 50, you are paying me $25 up front. Simple. That's all that is. It, it, it's either don't give it to me or you ain't gonna give it to me. And y'all already know them folks that don't want to give you the price, I mean, give you the money for it. They be playing in your inbox. Don't entertain them, folks. They don't, they're not for real. You know? So also just give yourself grace, give yourself time, enjoy the process of getting better because I'm telling you, nothing beats the process once you get good at laying foundation and laying acrylic and things like that you already in the door enjoy the process don't rush it like you know take it step by step by step by step but definitely pra- i hear people say practice every day i don't know it's up to you if you want to practice every day i don't do nails every day i don't practice nail art every day i don't paint every day i don't shake my nails every day i'm not no everyday person like i be needing breaks from life i be needing breaks from nails and stuff so I'm not gonna be like, yeah, practice your day. If you need, if you want to, practice your day. If you don't want to, you know, make a schedule. I'm gonna tell you, make a schedule for you to practice. But anyway, that's all for today, y'all. That's why I'm dropping little baby gems on you. Have a great weekend. And yes, this is the finished look of the nails. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the channel. And everybody have a lovely weekend. Everybody be safe out here in these streets. It is Friday the 13th. I don't believe in that bad luck and stuff anyway. Who knows? Friday 13th probably could be a really great day. You don't know, but we've been oppressed to make it seem like it's a bad day. Society measures. But anyway, this is the final look, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.